Welcome to Virtual Labs. Today we are going to find static modulus of concrete in compression as per IS code 516 part 8 section 1. Deformations are induced in concrete structural members due to loads imposed on them. It is often necessary to calculate such deformations, including deflections for the purposes of serviceability, crack control, and to consider the secondary effects of such deformations on the forces of the structures, like rip shortening, thermal effects etc. Static modulus of elasticity is used to estimate such deformations. Static modulus of elasticity in compression of hardened concrete is a property of concrete that corresponds to the tangent of the stress-strain curve. For design purposes, the modulus of elasticity is considered equivalent to the code modulus of deformation when the test specimen is loaded Fc by 9 Newton per mm square, basic stress, and Fc by 3, upper stress, as described in this part of this standard. Fc is the average cube compressive strength at 28 days age. For the calculation of static modulus of elasticity, First, we need to estimate the compressive strength of concrete. Place the specimen in the CTM. Cylinder specimens shall be compressed perpendicularly to the direction of casting. The load shall be applied without shock and increased continuously at a nominal rate of 14 MPa per minute. For our cylinder, this translates to 4.12 kN per second. Repeat the testing for two other cylinder specimen. Average compressive strength of cylinder came out to be as 57 NPa. Now let us see what apparatus is required to perform this experiment. First, test specimens. Two cylindrical specimens of preferably diameter 150 mm and height 300 mm casted with the same concrete mix and batch as cylinders. Second, Testing machine. The test shall be carried out using a compression testing machine conforming to IS 14858. The test machine shall be in calibration at the time of test. Third, strain measuring apparatus. In this experiment, we will be using strain gauges to measure the change in length as per IS 516 Part 8, Section 1. At least two strain gauges are needed for each cylinder specimen. Capping of cylinder is done to provide proper level surface so that loading can be uniform on it. Prepare a stiff plaster by mixing gypsum and water in it and while preparing the paste mix it well enough as this will help gypsum to gain strength. Place some amount of gypsum plaster on top of the cylindrical test specimen. Take a glass plate and apply a thin layer of oil or grease on the glass plate to avoid adhesion of the plaster with the glass plate. Using this glass plate, press down the stiff gypsum plaster by giving the plate a rotary motion. Place a bubble leveler in perpendicular directions to make sure that the plate remains parallel to the end surface. Wait for 20 minutes for POP to dry and then remove the glass plate carefully. After removing the glass plate, clean off the surface. Also repeat for the opposite face of cylinder. Attaching the strain gauges. Rub the surface with sandpaper to remove the surface layer of hardened cement paste from the area to be strain gauges. Mark the cylinder where strain gauges are to be placed. Use a soldering iron to solder the connections between the strain gauge and the lead wires. Before using the strain gauge for measurements, test it to make sure it is functioning properly using multimeter. Use a small amount of adhesive to apply to the center of the strain gauge. Be careful not to apply too much adhesive, as this can affect the sensitivity of the gauge. Carefully position the strain gauge onto the surface so that it aligns with the axis of deformation. Place the test specimen at the center of the machine. Apply the load continuously 
and without shock at a rate of 4.1 to kN per second until stress reaches Fc by 9, sigma b, and maintains stress Fc by 9 for 60 seconds. Steadily increase the stress at the constant rate within the range 3.53 kN per second to 5.3 kN per second until the stress equals Fc by 3, sigma A, and maintain for 60 seconds. Reduce the stress at the unloading rate same as loading rate to Fc by 9 and maintain for 60 seconds. Repeat for two additional loading cycles using the same loading and unloading rate and maintaining the stress, sigma i and sigma b, constant for a period of 60 seconds. After completion of the last preloading cycle, and a waiting period of 60 seconds under the stress sigma b is equal to fc by 9 newton per mm square, the strain reading at the various measurement lines epsilon b, during the succeeding 30 seconds shall be recorded. Increase the stress at the constant rate until the stress equals Fc by 3, maintain for 60 seconds. During the succeeding 30 seconds, measure and record the strain readings are taken at each measurement line epsilon A. When all elasticity measurements have been completed, the load on the test specimen shall be increased at the specified rate until failure of the specimen occurs. Check if stress at failure is within a range of plus or minus 20% of Fc. If not, this shall be noted in the test report, and it shall be reported that the results may not be reliable. The mean strain epsilon A and epsilon B respectively shall be calculated, and the static modulus of elasticity in compression is calculated. The static modulus of elasticity is reported as nearest multiple of 500. Hence we approximately take value as 35,000 MPA. Final result of the test are as follows. Compressive strength of concrete is equal to 57 MPA. And Static modulus of elasticity is equal to 35,000 MPA. Thank you.